Hi there. Today I'm going to be making the gluten-free pizza crust recipe from a Little Insanity website, which is Erica's Gluten-Free Flour Blend. And that's what I'm going to be using for the flour blend for this recipe. So to start out, I'm going to be using flax eggs in this recipe, substituting for the um, energy um, egg replacer that it calls for because I just I prefer to use a flax egg. This is a flax and chia blend. So to make the, make the flax egg, I'm going to be doubling the recipe. So I need two tablespoons of the ground chia or ground chia and flax. And then for each flax egg, you add three tablespoons of water. So this is six tablespoons here. I'm going to stir it up just to make sure it's all absorbed in the water. And I'm going to put that in the fridge while I prepare the rest of the ingredients. And what will happen is this will thicken up and turn into like a thick gel consistency. And that's going to replace the eggs in the recipe. Now, if you eat eggs, you can just skip this step and use two whole eggs, preferably large eggs, in the recipe. Okay. Did it beep? All right, so the next step is preparing our yeast mixture. And again, I'm doubling this recipe, so you're going to want to refer to the, re uh, the website for the recipe for the standard measurements, which will make four pizza crusts. I prefer to double it so I can freeze it, so we're doing eight pizza crusts. So I'm going to be starting with three cups warm water, not hot, not hot enough to kill the yeast, but it has to be warm enough that it will activate the yeast. Uh, I'm going to be adding six tablespoons of sugar to the water. How many was that? Four? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Five. Six. Then I'm going to be adding five teaspoons of yeast. are dissolving a little bit and then I set this aside you can already see that the yeast is activating right away you can see the activity and it's starting to bubble up and starting to grow so when this is all foamy it's ready Pause that. One. Okay. okay so the next step is we're going to be mixing our dry ingredients together for the flour blend. So like I said, my favorite flour blend is the um, Erica's Gluten-Free Flour Blend. And I actually use it not only for all the recipes on her website, but I prefer her flour blend when I'm making all of the recipes on Sarah Bakes Gluten-Free. And that's for all her baked goods and cookies and everything else. So I just make the one flour blend so I can use it in all my favorite recipes. So we've got here our Erica's flour blend. Here I've got six cups of flour. The next thing I'm going to be doing is adding baking powder. I'm going to be adding eight teaspoons of baking powder. So I've got some aluminum free baking powder here. And I mean, I'm not super precise with the measurements. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like level off the teaspoon. A little bit extra baking powder. It's just going to give you a little bit more rise to your crust and a little bit less, you know, you're not going to get the same amount of rice. So I just do five not exactly level teaspoons of baking powder. Or sorry, did I say five? Eight originally. Yes, yeah, sorry. I need to put three more in. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. Next it calls for salt. And I'm going to put two teaspoons of salt. 
I'm running low on salt in here, but I have enough. So one, two. It does call if you wanted to add in garlic powder or onion powder into the blend if you were so inclined. We're going to skip that just because we're going to put onion on top. I am just going to sprinkle in some pepper. It would call for at least half a teaspoon of pepper, but I don't like to use that much. So that's our dry ingredients. The next thing we're going to do is whisk our flour blend just to quickly make sure all the ingredients are well combined. And that's it for our dry ingredients. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna combine some olive oil and some apple cider vinegar. So I've got half a cup of olive oil here and it's organic olive oil. Now I'm going to add four tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And the reason we add the apple cider vinegar into a recipe like this is because it activates the baking powder. can see how much the yeast has started to rise. It's ready to go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our wet ingredients into the dry. So this is our olive oil and apple cider vinegar. I made a little bit of a well there. It really, it doesn't matter if you do or if you don't. So I just dump everything in there. So all the wet and the dry are combined, and then I just stir this up with a wooden spoon. And the yes, and I need to add the flax mixture as well. And you can even see the bubbles of the yeast as it's coming in contact with the flour, the carbs and the flour are also even activating it further. Now I still need to get, now you can really see it starting to come together. got the flax and chia mix and you can see how it's gotten really gelatinous now and that's exactly what we want it acts as a binding agent and it gives a little bit the sense a little bit of a, a multi-grain crust like, if, like you used to be able to get from pizza pizza you probably still can it's been 10 years since we've been gluten free. Nine since the children have been dairy free as well. So I'm just making sure there's no clumps of unmixed powder in the dough. You can see that it's really come together nice. going to let this sit for five minutes tops and then we'll get this rolled out into our crusts. I'm ready let now. Let me know when you're ready. Go ahead. Okay. So what I've done here is I've ripped up nine pieces of parchment. One to work on to divide this up into eight equal sized balls. 
And then I'm going to roll out each ball into a crust on the individual parchment sheets so they'll be all ready to go. I can stack them and then I can bake them partially, just a few minutes each, and then I freeze them. And then I can pull them out and use them through the week without having to go through all the effort of making dough again. So that's why I make such a big batch to save myself work through the week. All right, so I've got lots of rice flour here on my parchment and I'm going to sprinkle some more on top. It's pretty sticky, but not too bad. It really works. Um, it works just like, to me, a lot like regular dough. You know, from what I can remember, it's been a long time. So you'll see it really comes together really nice. So I'm going to divide this up into eight approximately eight size balls. Sometimes I need to adjust the size depending on how far off I am. So I started out with ones that are definitely a little too big at the beginning. No, those are all more or less. Oh wait, yeah, I ended up with nine. So, I mean, you could make those a little bigger, but this is a good size. This will make um, a good personal size pizza, probably about yay wide. We'll see when I roll them out. All right, so we're gonna roll this out. We're gonna do it all with our hands, no rolling pin needed. If you work right on the parchment paper, it makes your job so much easier and you keep your counters a lot cleaner as well. So I'm gonna grab another ball of these, of this dough. I already did one, if you wanna film over there. So that's what they end up looking like. Okay, so you'll see, I'm just gonna put this out and I start kind of working in a circle and spreading it out from the middle. These are, I guess, what you would call rustic. They're not perfectly rolled using a rolling pin. But if you use your hand as a guide, you can kind of work to a roughly circular shape. And you'll see that I'm pushing it towards the edge to create a little bit of an edge on the dough. Nothing too pronounced. And that's that. So, put that one over to the side, and I'll do another one quickly. Just so you can see how quick, once the dough's mixed up, how quick it is to actually form the pizza crust. This will not be a professional style cooking show, as I'm sure you guys can hear the kids in the background. Playing video games. Playing video games. It's Friday night. And, just, oh wait, it's a Thursday night. There and you and go. just to make it less professional, I'm going to tell you a good Ukrainian joke. We call this a rusticky crusticky. <laughs> no. This is not a rusticky crusticky, but... <laughs> nice try. <laughs> All right. So that's the other one. 
And that's it. Again, not perfect. They don't need to be perfect. They'll be delicious. And then that'll get put into an oven at about 375 until it's lightly golden brown, just firm. You don't want it too browned, otherwise you're gonna get a really dry crust when you go to pre or to rebake it with all your toppings on it.